Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. I want to continue reviewing the Karate Kid film franchise after I review the original The Karate Kid from 1984 on Monday. So I figured this would be the perfect way to um, talk about the rest of the series. So anyway, I'm going to start reviewing The Karate Kid Part 2, a surprisingly successful sequel to the original, this time with Daniel LaRusso, also known as Daniel Son, who accompanied his karate teacher and friend, Mr. Miyagi, to Okinawa, Japan, in aid of his dying father, only to encounter of a group of bullies. He eventually falls in love um, with a beautiful Japanese girl and also holds a long harbor grudge against Miyagi. Yeah. So, before I get to this review, I want to go back to the first movie, because why not? Even the second one actually went back to it in flashbacks of the opening. Okay. Um, now, as we all know, The Karate Kid was about uh, a story of an underdog teenager who just moved from his hometown to Reseda, you know, where things just wasn't what he was expecting, but hoping that he would have a great life there, if he could. I'm just hanging out with um, a neighbor next door with his friends, you know, playing soccer, until suddenly he got run in with a bully, Johnny Lawrence, who, who just um, apparently got to know um, his love interest, um, Ali, who's a who's a high school cheerleader, but she's also coming from her rich family, and so of course he has to defend himself against uh, Johnny and the rest of the Cobra Kai gang by having to deal with the training skills that Mr. Miyagi is going to give him you know, by doing chores. So. And then, also to get ready for the tournament that's going to happen, you know, which that's where Johnny suddenly gets disqualified after you know, fracturing his leg uh, during the the events. And then, I mean, wasn't so sure if he's going to go on because if he doesn't go on, then Johnny's going to win. So, of course, um, with Miyagi using the healing power, he'll be able to recover and be able to fight against him even though um, Johnny's sensei John Kreese wanted him to cream him completely so he'll win the first the prize until well Daniel Son um, uses the crane kick and kicks him in the face and there you go also to, to note though that I do love the chemistry between Daniel Son and Ali. Um, Elizabeth Shue was definitely beautiful and and when, when they hang out together in certain scenes, I mean, they were great. And she even hanged out uh, during the tournament as well, so that was really s sweet. So, shows that she actually cares. I mean, it wasn't easy because of having to deal with um, Johnny. I mean, and Ali just hated Johnny completely. And and her parents, you know, kept forcing him to to actually fall in love with. But especially during the scene of, of the country club, which Daniel Son actually made a fool of himself just trying to you know, go on a date with her. But uh, anyway, um, but nevertheless, I mean, it's it's a classic. Okay. Now, yes. Uh, now, going back to part two, though, this is where it left off. It actually became the highest-grossing film of the franchise. In fact, it actually grossed more than the original. Eleven five point one million dollars out of its thirteen million budget. Yes. I think mostly because of the set locations of Okinawa Island in Japan. 
It was actually shot in Atahu, uh, Hawaii. So it looks incredibly exotic and beautiful. The way they they actually um, uses the the cinematography to shoot all of this this beautiful island and landscape and everything. You know, like you see the the trees, you see the the river, you see um, all these villages around. It's just um, beautiful, breathtaking. But of course, um, it does follow the story that that focuses on Miyagi's uh, family and and all and all that happens. And of course, the jealousy of of his best friend uh, Sato, who was ready to get married to his wife, because apparently Miyagi fell in love. And of course, um, her nephew, who's uh, very beautiful and and together um, Daniel son actually fell in love with her so it, there was another great chemistry just like the the first movie but of course he has to deal with a group of bullies that's led by by that one man this is gonna be the biggest challenge fight that we're gonna have I mean, or any of the other skills that we're gonna be teached by Yaki so let's start the review Stars Ralph Macchio, Nobuyuki Pat Morita, Nobo McCarty, Tamalin Tamita, Yugi Amumato, Joey Mashima, Mark um, Hashi, Danny uh, Kamakana, Martin Kov, William Zapka, Tony O'Dell, Ron Thomas, and Rob Garrison. Also joined in is BD1, you know, long before he went on to do Jurassic Park. And Clarence Gilliard uh, from Die Hard and Walker, Texas Ranger, as well as Madlock. Yep, it's written by Robert Mark Carmen, who created the characters of the original, with producer Jerry Weinstribe. And it's directed by John G. Aberson, who directed the original film. The movie begins um, shortly after the All Valley Karate Tournament in Reseda, California, where Daniel Song, played by Rob Macchio, just won first place, received a trophy, um, and he just uh, got back, just went to the showers, and it was he was getting ready to go home with Mr. Miyagi, played by Nobuyuki Padmarita, until all of a sudden, Sansei John Kreese, played by Martin Cove, had become completely furious and attacks Johnny Lawrence, played by William Zapka, because he won second place and he said that he was not good enough for it. You know, he didn't deserve second place at all. He deserves first place. So he actually tears apart um, his trophy and was ready to beat the shit out of him in the parking lot. But Miyagi confronts Kreese, telling him to, to leave the boy alone. But then Kreese just got so angry that he was ready to fight against Miyagi. But he, he refuses because he doesn't want to fight anymore. So what's he do? He passively immobilized him by actually punching his fist straight into the car windshield twice on, on between two cars yeah because he moves around and then later he threatens to strike a deadly blow straight into his neck but instead he comically tweaks his nose he faints and he walks away completely so <laughs> He almost could have uh, killed him completely, but he didn't. But it was perfect. Anyway, six months later, Daniel Song visits Mr. Miyagi's house after previously attending a senior prom at his high school, previously explaining that his love interest, Ali, who was played by Elizabeth Shue, had completely dumped him for a football player from the UCLA. 
Yeah, that sucks. Which, by the way, Elizabeth Shue did not reprise her role in the sequel. And she didn't came back in the third one either. Because at the time, uh, she was at Harvard University, the actress. And then later she went on to do a movie called Adventures in Babysitting. And she also did a few films here and there. And, and of course, Back to the Future Parts 2 and 3. You know, replacing Claudia Wells. And of course, she went on to do a lot of movies to follow. Including Leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> with Nicolas Cage. Okay, anyway. So Miyagi receives a letter notifying him that his father became very ill and he's dying completely. He plans to return to his home village on Okinawa Island in Japan. Um, which he wanted to go alone. But daniel san had, had nothing to do because um, his mother is just... Um, going out of town for a while. Uh, apparently um, his mother wanted to take him to Fresno but he didn't want to join in because you know, he, he just felt pretty bored. So since there's nothing else that he can do he decided to um, join in with Mr. Miyagi and brought him in to um, the island because he actually read the book of Okinawa. He starts to study the language and you look at all the sites and everything hoping this will be um, the best thing for him to discover so anyway Miyagi explains to him that he once fell in love with a beautiful woman named Yuki who is played by Nobi McCarthy who arranged to marry his best friend Sato who is played by Danny Kamakana um, who happens to be the son of the richest man in the village and a federal karate student of his father. But upon announcing his intentions to marry uh, Yuki, Sato challenged him to a fight to the death. But Miyagi refused to fight and decided that he wanted to leave the country as a coward because he just didn't want to deal with this anymore. So that's where he he became an eccentric candy man at the apartment ever since. So once they arrived at Okinawa, Miyagi and Daniel san are greeted by chosen Tokuchi, who is played by Yuji Automato, who happens to be the nephew of Sato. And that's when Sato demands uh, Miyagi to fight, which, as usual, he refuses. So arriving at the village, Miyagi and Daniel's son had woken by Yugi and her niece, who is a beautiful Japanese girl named Kamiko, who is played by Tamlin Tamita. They discovered that Sato has become the richest industrialist who's whose um, fishing trawlers had destroyed the local fish population around, um, impoverishing other villagers. They actually have been forced to rent their property from Sato, who owns uh, the village's land, and Yuga reveals that she never married him at all, because her love for Miyagi. So she was all alone. Uh, with her niece, Kamiko, and just move on with, with their lives. But then, anyway, they're about to uh, meet um, Miyagi's father, already dying completely. And this is where it happens when both uh, Miyagi and Sato meet. Sato gave him three days to moan out of respect before their fight. But Miyagi shows Daniel san the secret to his family's karate you know, at his village. In fact, he even brought in a handheld drum that as he twitches back and forth, which is a drum technique that blocks and defends a karate move, 
that Danielson starts to practice completely. And that's where he actually explains um, to Miyagi about his father when he died. You know, he didn't get along and until the funeral happened, and that's where he said goodbye. Yeah, so that was a sad moment. So, but meanwhile, Daniel's son had accidentally exposed corruption in Chosen's um, grocery business, which then he accuses him of assaulting his honor. And they had a series of confunctions that's going around, so that's when he joins with a gang of, of bullies, started to beating the shit out of him just when he was about to, you know, go on a date with Kamiko. That's when the few started to rush in, coming to the head when Chosen and his entire group attacked him and vandalized um, Miyagi's family property. But they completely defeated and run off after Miyagi arrives. Now both Miyagi and Daniel San had planned to return back to Los Angeles, which is Reseda, before the situation gets even much worse. But, however, Sato shows up with his bulldozers and threatening to destroy the village if Miyagi refuses to fight completely. So, so Miyagi would give them the condition that Sato signs the village land title over to the village uh, regardless of the fight outcome. But he agrees after Miyagi described the condition at a small price to pay for his honor. So, anyway, so meanwhile, um, so as it continues, uh, Daniel San just goes around you know, hanging around with Kamiko, and then before it shows on, just keeps attacking him. He actually went straight to um, a local uh, bar, which this is where they're about to break the ice. Um, and Miyagi uh, came around and actually shows um, Daniel Son how to break it by focusing. You know, because just like how he did his training in the first movie, you know, because he had to focus, he had to build his strength, his confidence, and be able to remember everything, all the steps and skills that he's been taught and be able to do it well. Because he was afraid that he was going to re receive some cuts and bruises, especially on his hand. But, and, but this was a memorable moment though where he finally gets to do it. You know, they actually have to pay him to do this. And what do you know? <laughs> he actually did it. You know, he practiced, he focused, and then, chop! Chopped all three of these blocks of ice. And then he won the money. And that way he'd be able to save the money for his college education. Yeah. So, um, so of course, he went on a date with Kamiko, you know, going to a, uh, a local restaurant, um, and actually going around dancing you know, to all the 50s style music or 60s even but you know they, they had a wonderful dance and had fun and I'm going to talk about that memorable uh, scene which which was very sweet um, but anyway on the day of the fight uh, but I'm going to explain it later but on the day of the fight a typhoon had arrived. The villagers had to take cover at the nearby shelter, but Sato got trapped when his family's Jojo has been leveled by the storm completely. So Miyagi and Dinosaur had rushed to rescue him, along with um, Sato's nephew Chosen. So they they had to carry Sato to safety, but then. Daniel's son had attempted to rescue a child on the top of a nearby bell tower. And so Sato orders Chosen to help, but when he refuses, uh, Sato rushes to assist Daniel's son himself. 
which Miyagi joined in too. And then he then disowned his nephew for refusing to cooperate and the rage chosen to run off in the storm in disgrace. So the next morning the villagers are rebuilding the entire uh, village and then Salto returns with his bulldozers so that way you know everything will be all set and Salto hand over the land title to the village and asks Miyagi for forgiveness so which he actually accepts so at this rate there's not going to be a fight at all so then Daniel and Kamiko approach the Sato by hosting an upcoming Oban festival in nearby ceremonial castle so which he agrees and invites him to join in the celebration so so that's where Kamiko performs a dance at the festival so everything was going completely well or at this rate excellent but once we get to the final climax, uh, Chosen, who's now very vengeful, has suddenly ziplined into the presentation, takes her hostage, and demands to fight against uh, Daniel Son alone, because he learns that this is not the tournament, this is for real. And that's where Mr. Miyagi, joining in with the rest of of the villagers you know actually bringing in the handheld drum so that way he'll be ready to to fight against uh, Chosen and yes and th this was a big fierce fight that they ever had and by the end of the fight that's where um, Daniel Son had took Chosen raised his hand like this and he says live or die man live or die and then he says die and at the end he says I don't think so and he tweaks his nose and the fight ends yep just in the same position that Miyagi had actually done with uh, John Kreese so yep Chosen got dropped to the ground Daniel San had embraced Kamiko and Miyagi had looked completely proud of what he did. So now, it was finished. Amazing. Yes, and to me, this is the only good sequel in the series that I really love and simply the best. To me, this actually ended better. And that's what it should have been. Um, because... Um, I love the location. It looks incredibly beautiful, breathtaking, as I mentioned. Um, I love the characters that they got. Um, didn't have a problem with that. Um, I actually love the chemistry this time with um, Daniel San and the Japanese girl Kamiko. It, it really sparks completely. And in fact, that one moment, a very sweet moment that I'm definitely going to explain now, was when. While the music is playing in the background, you know, Bill Conti's score, just before the typhoon hits, um, there was a moment where it's all in silence. We see her making some tea, and Daniel Sana came. They didn't say a word, and it was all shooken up, all mixed up, and then later he had to shook the, the bowl, and then he drinks it. and. And Kamiko smiles. Um, that was a sweet moment. I, I love it. And I also love the other moments too when they were dancing at the bar. You know, and she had a lovely um, dress that she was wearing. Yeah, the 50 cell dress. And he was dressed up um, casually as well. And it was beautiful. I, I mean, I wanted to see more of the love scenes between both Daniel Son and Kamiko. It was just just a uh, sparkle. And also uh, Pabarita as Miss Miyagi was excellent as usual of course and he's just even better and he's just as um, surprising in, in his role 
because uh, we get to know about his family and and how he because this is basically Miyagi story you know how he had to deal with um, his best friend Sato and the fact that it's because of jealousy that the rules in like he was the one who wants to take over but he felt like you know Miyagi pretty much takes everything from him looks infuriated his honor so that's why you know he he's the one who wants to to own the village and he wants to own everything he wants to marry Yuki he wanted everything that came from his father and also wants uh, his nephew uh, chosen you know to get into the grocery business and be able to work with his uh, cronies around and hoping for the best but that wasn't the case because that's where it starts the family feud yeah and how chosen had to destroy everything and that's how he became hot-headed and he became a, an asshole so I, I, I know it has its problems but that doesn't mean that it's bad But anyway, and of course, um, Ralph Macchio was also excellent as Daniel LaRusso. In fact, he was a lot stronger this time and more likable and charming than ever before. And this is exactly how he should stay that way. Because that's what I want in this movie. I mean, that's what we really want. You know, with all the training that he's been going through, and you know, having to deal with all these bullies around, and he's trying to defend himself. You know he's getting beat up a lot. Well, this is the case. So, and even if he has to train again, that's that's perfect. Also, you don't want to forget the the soundtrack because uh, besides Bill Conti's uh, wonderful rousing score, um, the best song of the entire soundtrack is none other than "Glory of Love" by Peter Satara. For those who don't know, he was the lead singer of the band Chicago. And he was always been a great singer, songwriter, and, and also the fact that the song became the number one hit on the charts in, in the United States. And actually received the Cammy Award nomination for Best Song, so it was amazing. I love that song. Um, it's often played on the radio, so every time you hear that song, you always think of the movie. And it's the perfect time, perfect tune for the film. In fact, not only perfect, but awesome. And the film really is awesome, too. I, I thought the action scenes uh, really work well. I mean, I, despite the fact that it got criticized by critics around. In fact, I found out it got a 42% on Rotten Tomatoes, which it doesn't deserve. It deserves a higher rating than that. It actually deserves pretty much the same rating as the first movie, 88%, or better yet, 92%, because it's even better. But what do I know? That's how critics are these days, and that's how this website is, too. Um... There's also other songs too, like for example, uh, Earth Angel by New Edition, Rock and Roll Over You by the Moody Blues, yeah, Rock Around the Clock by Paul Rogers, yeah, so it's just random 50s style songs. Um, so any, anyway, um, of course, um, it would later have a video game for the NES, which Basically, it's uh, the Karate Kid, but they just use the elements uh, that set directly from Part Two, and using all the stages and all. I mean, I know, I know, it's it's not perfect, but you get the idea. Um, they even have a computer game as well, so it's a mixture of both movies together. Uh, so, Mark. Um, so anyway, Robert Mark Common returned, and he did approve a great script. Um, 
John G. Alberson did a wonderful time directing this movie, just like how he did with the original. Really love his direction completely. And um, again, I love the cinematography. It was done by James uh, Crabb. Um, the editing choices it's done. I mean, John G. Alberson actually joined in with David Garfield and Jane Cusson. So it was perfectly paced. I mean, the film, of course, is um, is nearly two hours. I mean, the original was only two hours and seven minutes, closer to two hours and 30 minutes. So I, I kind of wish it was a little longer. So maybe it could have extended more, but I understand. And sometimes, uh, yes, uh, the ending does get um, mercifully paced. It, it goes pretty fast. Just like um, the first movie, too. Um, that's another thing that that often does, too. I mean, usually it can be like a slow-mo shot before we finally get to the, uh, the cheering on. It's just amazing. Um... And I, I and for the villains though, because I know they got criticized. I didn't mind Salto and Chosen, particularly Chosen, because as a hothead he is. I mean, you could tell how much of an asshole he was in the way he was treating Daniel Song completely. Just like how Johnny Lawrence had uh, had treated uh, Daniel Song completely. <laughs> First one. Um. And Yuki was also beautiful, too. Um, I also love the chemistry with Mr. Miyagi and, and her. And, and quite honestly, I think Miyagi would have had uh, fell in love and be able to get married to her instead. I mean, since he actually once had a wife and with a newborn child, which is really sad. But I, I understand. They had to go for their ways. Okay, but nevertheless, um, it's a wonderful sequel, a great follow-up to the first movie, and it actually ended better, in my opinion. So there you go. So that's The Karate Kid Part 2, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Stay tuned for the next reviews of all the... Karate Kid movies that's coming up.